Welcome to the Zone 2 Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Hubner, joined here with only one host. It's Mark Sato, and we have a special guest today. It's um, Israel startup development writer, Riley Pickerel. How are you today, Riley? Uh, it's pretty late. It's almost my bedtime. What time is it over there? It's just about 8, 7.45. Yeah. It's 8 o'clock? Yeah, it here is. it's 11 right now. It's going to be a very interesting podcast because Riley is in Spain, I believe. So the Wi-Fi is, as you know, Wi-Fi across the world is super fast. So today's podcast should just be a lot higher quality than usual and riley's frozen again perfect timing perfect timing okay. it literally it literally glitched out right when you said that so <laughs> i actually don't have i actually don't have any internet in my apartment i have to do everything off my mobile hotspot oh oh gosh. wow that must be really expensive uh it's 30 30 euros a month and I use about 180 gigs a month. And like, but it's, it's 30 euros and you can use like as much as you want? Yeah, it's pretty much unlimited. Wow, have, that's actually pretty good. I get 45 gigs of 5G and then the rest is LTE, so. Oh, yeah. pretty solid. Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. You, How long have you been in Spain now? Because you are training with, uh, training with Israel Startup Development Team. You yeah, I've been so I flew over here in February, and then uh, late February I was planning on coming over in January, but with COVID it was super hard to get visas. Um, so I'm I finally made it over late February, and then I'm here until September ish, mid to late September probably. So about three more months. Wow. Um... Actually, we should probably introduce uh, you first. I don't know if you want to do a quick introduction of who you are, because in British Columbia, and I think probably other parts of Canada, you're a really well-known name, but for any of our Australian listeners who don't know who you are, and we also have a lot of listeners from Alaska. It's a very common place. We actually have listeners in Bangladesh. I was looking at the... I was looking at the analytics. We got some listeners in Bangladesh, so they might not know who you are. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, Riley Pickerel. I race with uh, Israel Cycling Academy, which is the development team for Israel Startup Nation. Um, grew up in Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, raced with Triple Shot and then uh, Red Truck uh, Racing. And yeah, no, that came up through the Tang Road program. Had some success on the track and then up over to road and junior really started to commit junior and commit to road and junior and then here i am cool. so uh, so what kind of uh how much racing are you uh doing over there in your <laughs> right now here there's there's like zero racing but it's looking to start up in the next few weeks but um what's going on over there yeah so it's like uh racing got canceled early in the season and a lot of it was postponed so i've only had six or six or seven race days in the first three months which is like nothing uh, but then my second half of the season i have like if all goes well and selections go well i'll probably have between 35 and 40 by the end uh 35 and 40 in the next three months um so i'll look at around 45 to 50 use of races so 35 races yeah 30, oh, 35 to 40 race days so um like i have <clears throat> stage race in two weeks on the 15th yeah two weeks roughly and it's three days so it would be three race days even though it's only one race mm-hmm. what would you say uh your biggest goals for the year are in terms of the racing um avenue probably I can get selected into the avenue. That would be a big one. Um, over here, it's like completely different, though. Like, um, you're like diving in head first. You don't know how deep the water is. So it's like, um, result, like you go into each race. Like, if you have 
like you have a team role and you just do the team role to the best of your abilities. And then like, when you get an opportunity to like, okay, this race, like this is an opportunity for you to do well. It's like, okay, you better I can get your shit together and win a bike race or something, right? So depends on the race, but yeah, learning lots this year. Is it, uh, do you think like next year you're still going to be on development team or is kind of like the goal to be on the actual Israel startup team for bigger events? I'll probably be on the, I'll probably be on the development team next year as well. Yeah. Okay. And then the goal from that is to move up to a pro, pro team. Yeah. World tour team. World tour team. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. What would, what would you say that uh, you touched on it briefly, but like, what's that uh, transition like from, you know, just a, Canadian junior races to uh, racing where you are now? So like junior in, it's junior in North America and like I know are you first year uh, first year junior Mark? Yeah. And then your secondary week. So hopefully you get to do Avenir next year Mark or not Avenir um, Abitibi hmm. and it's like it's like the race gets progressively harder as so if it's a 150k state you can expect it to be like it get progressively harder as the race goes on so there's not really any structure to the bike race it's just like it's just like this linear from like easy hard straight line um, as the race goes on whereas here it's like first hour it's like a it's like a crit I, I like all my peak powers and whatnot, it will come from the first hour as like the brakes trying to establish and whatnot. And then it settles down and there's a structure and like people are obligated to chase, teams are obligated to chase. That happens. And then it ramps back up again to the finish, but everyone's fucked from the, from the first hour. The, the last hour is actually like, if the power is higher, it's not that much higher. That's why you see like power numbers from the end of like, like I don't know if you guys ever seen like uh, Valverde's power numbers from like one minute punch at the finish. It's like it's impressive, it's like 740 watts. So that's uh, like 11 watts per kilo for a minute. And you're like, damn, that's like, those are good numbers, right? But you're like, it's Valverde. Like surely he's able to do like more, and it's because he's already done probably 5,000 kilojoules before that. So it's fucked, but he's still able to perform. That's the biggest difference is like being able to perform after you're like way in deep in the bike race. So that's the, that's the biggest jump going from junior in Canada to U23 over here. Yeah. The race I did in Italy um, a couple of weeks back uh, the hardest BC Super Week race I did, I did three, I think 320 average, maybe 380 normalized for the hour. And this was in 2019, last BC Super Week. This race, I did three hours at 320, 360 normalized. So it was like the hardest BC Super Week race for three hours, and it was U23. It's like, okay, yeah, this is this is a whole different beast. <laughs> That's pretty insane. That's 300. That's, isn't, what did uh, Matthew Vanderpool do for a classic? He did 370 for three hours or something or four hours? He did three, three, he did like 340 or 350 average, almost 400 normalized for six hours for Strata. Strata Bianchi. And what did you do? Oh, like 320, 340. 40 average or 340 normalized for, for I mean, three hours and I was completely gassed me. like totally fucked I say that's pretty close you should um you should uh talk to him and say hey let's race yeah. <laughs> no the the depth over here is nuts like um I remember I was listening to Swain's podcast which if any listeners also want a banging podcast that's one to jump on but um he was saying, um, and it like I acknowledge that once he said it, is like if you look at a results sheet and it's like a hundred guys bunch sprint, 
and it's 180 guy pack, so 80 guys are out the back. It's not that like, oh, you just have to stay in the bunch and then you're there for the punch kick. Like 80 of the best guys, 80 of the guys in that race, which are all UCI pro teams, got dropped. Like it's ridiculous how fast sprinters climb here. Like Andre, that guy is like 80 kilo, maybe. Like that guy's a big unit. And like he'll be riding up a climb at like 500 watts, like comfortably. Like you'll look like he knows breathing at 500 watts. It's freaky. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's one of those things where whenever I think, oh, I can like be, win nationals in Canada, but then winning nationals in Canada is really kind of not, it's kind of like nowhere in Europe, really. Well, it's, it's not that it's like, like, if you win nationals in Canada, you're strong. Yeah. Right? Like, you can be competitive. It's just like the, just like the style of racing and learning how to race. Like, it's not like, oh, you can win nationals in Canada and then you'll, like, you won't have an injury. Like, if you win nationals in Canada, you have an injury. Like, you're strong. It's just like, there's, you have a full, like, year of learning over here before you don't be like okay really able to, to perform because you'll have the engine but you won't have like the um the know-how yeah yeah hmm. what I sorry for this interruption but we have to talk about our amazing sponsors at t wax if you love road bikes as much as we do you've probably heard about wax chains and the benefits that they bring but like me, you've probably never waxed your chain because you don't know how. Well, luckily for you and me, T-Wax is here to save the day. Local legend Timothy Ho can bring you a perfectly waxed chain for your next ride. Direct message T-Wax on Instagram for more information and use code ZONE2 for 15% off their already incredibly low price. Again, direct message T-Wax on Instagram for more information and use code ZONE2 for 15% off. Now back to the podcast. What type of a racer are you now talking about sprinters and such? Because I believe you were pretty much a sprinter, right? Yeah. And are you still then? Yeah. Or just well, a domestic now? Well, no, I'm still I'm still riding as a, as a sprinter, but it's... Um, <clears throat> you do... Um, you do a lot of work for others like early on. Um, and then you kind of also have to like figure out like, okay, I'm a, like I obviously have a peak power to be a sprinter, but where else can I, can I perform? Right. Like uh, Michael Matthews, for example, like technically that guy's a sprinter, but he's competitive in harder stages. Um, uh, like if you compare Peter Sagan, who you might say, okay, that's a sprinter, compared to um, Sam like Bennett Bruno Wagen, yeah, Sam Bennett, those are real sprinters. Those are great yeah. sprinters. So it's kind of like, okay, where are you? Where do you fit in? So, yeah. Yes. Interesting you kind of have to case. win by graces to be classified as something. I know I'm not yeah. a client, and that's about it. Yeah. Peter Sagan is more of a like Classic. classics, yeah. Like, yeah, it's interesting. There's kind of like that middle ground between sprinter and climber. It's kind of like classics. Yeah, and then ask what Matthew Vanderpool is and uh, what men are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they're not. Well, they still can win sprints, but yeah. yeah. Walt Van Aert can win sprint. Yeah, and so Matthew Vanderpool. Um. So talking about all these pro guys and stuff, what is your training like every week? Like say a week where you're not doing a race um, and you're not trying to like build up or build down for a race. Like what's a normal kind of week look like for you training in Europe? So I just pull it up. I'll just, I'll it. just read you a week for my training plan. That'll probably be easy to say. Good yeah, idea. Sure. Good idea. Cheers. 
Riley coming through the big I ideas. Think Richard would mind this? I don't think so. Don't think um. So. Well, yeah, we're gonna send this to any Austin stuff so they'll know. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Do, 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 do. So let's go. All right. Here's a good week. All right. Monday, I had um. 1.5 hours to two hours full recovery ride. So recovery day. Um, Tuesday, uh, good warm up. Find a two ish hour lap, 320 average for two hours, 30 minutes easy after. So just a two hour like aerobic capacity block at 320. Uh, oh, this Jeez. one was nasty. Uh, three to four hours. So this Wednesday, three to four hours. Uh, six by uh, that's about 11 minutes where I do two minutes at 3.30 and then uh, 15 second 95% sprint so I'll probably be hitting like 12 to 1300 watts for 15 seconds and then I get in, straight into another two minutes at 3.30 sprint two minutes at 3.30 sprint two minutes at 3.30 sprint so one two three four only four Four sprints, five sprints, something like that. So six by 10 minutes with five sprints in there. Um, Thursday, another recovery day. Friday, another recovery day. And then Saturday, five by six minutes, 45 seconds at 550 and then 15 seconds. So kind of like over-unders. You do 45 seconds at 550 and then 15 seconds. Um, and then... Sunday I had any ride up to me, so I think I probably did four or five hours. So that works out to probably a 22 hour training week with intensity. So, and that was a week, the week before the week, to, so two weeks to the race day. So, wow. there you go. Pretty solid so week. Usually I'll have 20-ish hours. 20 to 24, probably, um, hours with three, yeah, I'd say probably three interval or intensity days, three to four interval to intensity days, and usually one to two recovery days. But the um, recovery days are usually an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So you said 20 hours. Yeah, that's a lot of climbing though. I'm like looking at your Strava right now, <laughs> spying on all your data. That's all good. I post it all. If anybody yeah. wants to, yeah, you're all actually my, and all my. Uh, usually, I write down what intervals I do, unless I'm crap. If you see morning ride, but you take a look, and the, and there's intervals in it, and I just label it as morning ride. It's either I'm too lazy, or I was like having a really bad day. So there's a pro tip for you. Yeah. Talking about Strava and labeling things, number one, um, you're really open about all your data, aren't you? Like yeah. everything well, doesn't, doesn't really I, I, power meters can change. Like there's a plus or minus between people's power meters, but yeah, there's no point in being secretive about it. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, because if you're fast, you're fast, and if you're slow, you're slow. Yeah. Kind of doesn't really matter what other people are doing. Secondly, what do you think of uh, my recovery rides on Strava? Oh, oh yes. That, that <laughs> was like, I had so much fun with that. So for anybody who doesn't know, Luke posted a, uh, a ride and he labeled it recovery ride. And it was like 99 kilometers or 100 kilometers, three hours, like 32 average, 220 watts. And it was like, full beans and i'm like obviously you're not recovering at 220 like my recovery rides usually i, I go for two watt per kilo recovery rides so i usually go for about 150 it's a bit under but i'm like I'm a proud <laughs> believer in the two watt per kilo recovery rides and this guy posted a three hour ride at whatever almost probably 3.5 watt per kilo and i'm like dude so i what did I say? I said, if you label a ride recovery ride, does that make it a recovery ride? And it started this whole 
I don't think he ever changed the title, but it was like I was like laying. No, in I think I think I changed. I think I changed it to. Um, it was called just Recovery Ride with the Boss because I rode with um, with my local bike shop uh, owner, and so I titled it that. And then and then after all that, I retitled it and called it um, Easy Recovery Ride with the Boss. Right. <laughs> I was like, and I think I went, I think I went and I looked and you had to go back like two and a half weeks to find a ride with a higher average power. So that recovery. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is amazing. This is so good. And then there's another one recently, I think. Yeah, you just did one yeah. recently, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's super high. I'm going to upload the one ride. today. No. That's, that's the I... <laughs> Mark does not a ride easy either don't you do sprints on your recovery days yeah yeah i do <laughs> i do do that um I've, I've been getting better at uh not doing that but i i do i just get bored you know it's like you're riding that like zone one it's like this is like this is this sucks yeah <laughs> but see the so I'm a firm believer is if you can't do your recovery right easy enough you're not training like the intervals aren't hard enough because like Man, when I finally get to a recovery day, I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going out and I'm riding in my easiest gear all day. And that's going to be the mm -hmm. dream. I had yeah, I just one today, which actually that. was quite relaxing. Yeah, that's true. Mark, do more sprints. Come on. I will. I will today. My, my recovery ride today was um, 198 watts. Average wasn't that long ago that if I did I, I I remember when I first got a power meter in 2000 I think I got a power meter in 2016 and then I think in so I was 15 and I think until I was like first year junior all the way up until I was first year junior the ride was north of 200 watts I was like yeah it's a fucking good ride it's a good good day on the bike it would be like a three hour day maybe some intervals and I'd be like 198 and I'd be like good fucking ride <laughs> <laughs> yeah i my like i love getting high averages i don't know if i can really look at them but like this week especially like okay so today was 198 average uh yesterday was 226 average um like these aren't interval days by the way these are just normal uh 219 this day was intervals, but it was just 207. If I have intervals, it's always way lower because then I'm like recovering and in the recovery between intervals, I actually do like zone recovery. one. Yeah. Where if it's a zone two ride, then I'm like consistently riding in my zone two. So then the average is way higher. But anyway, recovery rides, they're a thing. I don't really do them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we should get back on track. I got a, I got a question, Riley. Oh, so how is that we're, not on track. Oh, we're talking about whatever. We have a okay. program here that we have to Stand follow. That's true. Um, I got class to go to eventually, but yeah. Um, Riley, yeah. so you're on, you're on uh, Israel, as you mentioned. So how, I don't know how much you want to disclose, but um, how, how did you get on there? How much are you uh, being paid? Uh, What's the contract look like? That's right. Well, I'll answer. I'll answer Mark's and not Luke's. <laughs> um, so I actually don't know 100% how my name got passed around. I think so. Our director is Zach, Zach Dempster, and I think he was in contact with Kevin Field, who was uh, high performance road manager. I think. Yeah. yeah, and I think my name got passed over from there, uh, and then I got on based on uh, word of mouth, advocacy results. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, I was approached for 2020, but I had already committed with the UCIP. So I was just like, hey, um, can you keep me, keep me in touch for 2021? Uh, I'd love to join you guys for 2021 after I'm done by year with this team. And they said, yep, yeah, sounds good. And we just, Restart our conversation back in September, and yeah, welcome there. Yeah, there's a lot of Canadians on Israel because I believe the owner is Canadian or one of the main manager people. They're Canadian, right? Yeah, Sylvan Adams is uh, Canadian Israeli. 
So we have, so there's four, four Canadians on the World Tour team and then two on the development team. So me and Robin Paladon. Very cool. How are the factor bikes? They're sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the, the one, the arrow bike. And the then, yeah, no, they're pretty, they're pretty nice actually. They're, hmm. the, the one is almost like, it's stiff to the point where it's like almost too stiff. <laughs> like it's like, it's a great race bike. But if somebody was like, yeah, I just want to buy a bike to, to ride around just like enjoy my commute or whatever to enjoy riding bikes and not going fast. I'd be like, don't buy that bike, buy, buy the O2. The O2 is like the nicest bike to ride ever. But the one mm -hmm. is like pretty deadly. Pretty deadly, pretty deadly. Um, how's Chris Froome? How's he doing? Have you talked to him recently? Never met him. I haven't met him. Oh, you, you, can, you, can, you can tell us. You can tell us. We know you've met him. Come on. Do you I like... haven't met him. But he seems like the world's nice pro, to be honest. Actually, like there's enough world tour pros here that it's like half the pro peloton lives here. It's nuts. Yeah, it's like uh, if you're successful, you live in Monaco, and if you're on the pro team, you live in Girona. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Or Nice. Don't forget Nice. It's the other one. It's like three. Oh, months. really? Monaco, Nice, and Girona. I was almost an exchange student in Nice cool city nice train so, station cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> um so who are some of the um who are some of the world tour guys notable world tour guys you met i'm curious i wrote with woodsy today uh, okay and then who else uh well, Van Art came and sat down next to us at the coffee table once. Wow. Me, me Wait, and Jill really? Were, me, and, yeah, me and Jill, Jillian Elsie were, were at the coffee shop, and Van well, Art came and uh, just the table next to us. It was pretty funny. So I was like, oh, shit. It's Walt Van Art. <laughs> That's pretty insane. That That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, because he's like all the people you see on TV, and then he's just there at a coffee shop. Man, the guy is like... The guy's a unit. Like, the guy goes uphill so fast to how big he is. Like it's it's shocking. Some of those guys. Wow, that's pretty insane. Do you know the reason that Israel Startup Nation has so many like kind of their team seems to be filled with a lot of um, past pros? If you know what I mean, like Chris Froome. He's very much, to put it politely, past his prime, we'll say. Um, and same with like quite a lot of the people they have. They have like a lot of people who are super, super, super successful, but now kind of aren't. Is there like, do you know if there's they, a reason for that? They brought on a lot of big names when they went world tour. Yeah. Because they went world tour in what, 2020 was their first world tour. Mm-hmm. They brought on a lot of big names now, but I don't think it's like um, there's there are a lot of big names on the team right now who are in their prime. But like, um, yeah, Woodsy. Yeah, like Woodsy, um, Mark, Ben Hermans, like there's uh, Hugo Hofstetter, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's I think the especially because we're not we're not exposed to as many riders in Europe or European riders in North America. So uh, we know Froome and Andre because they're such big names. But there's a lot of others who are, um, who are on the team that we're just less aware of. Oh gosh, that's... I mean, not. Mm. yeah, that's pretty good. How, how's Woodsy? Because he's probably the most successful Canadian rider, at least, well, currently. I mean, Ryder Heschedal is probably the most ever. I'm not sure, though. But Woodsy's, yeah, like, the biggest Bauer right now. Too. Woodsy's probably the most well-known now. Woodsy's, like, Woodsy's awesome. Yeah. Woodsy's a top quality dude. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody could say anything negative about Woodsy. Guy's a legend, to be honest. 
Yeah, I think he's a he's like me. He doesn't like recovery rides. I've heard. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> the guy More. trains hard. That guy's interval sessions are pretty. Because you have so much repeatability. Yeah, I'm up... Sorry. I'm kind of upset this week. I haven't like had any intervals. It's been really upsetting. I've just been like zone two, zone two. It's pretty Very upsetting. Good. Well, that is the name of the podcast, you know. Yeah, that is that is the name of the podcast. I'm Hu Yeah. Yeah. Hu. Everyone I've ever met calls him Hu. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've never. Heard I have him. no clue what his first name is. It's just Hu. That, that is his first name. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, oh yeah, it's Sushang Amari or something. Arari yeah. or I don't know. Amiri. Yeah. You don't even know your own coach. Is he's a big but he's he's a big fan of Zone Two, that's for sure. Is Tim still coaching you, Mark? Yep. Hey Mark, do you get beaten on the clowns by Annabella? I don't really Annabella doesn't really uh, ride with us that often. Um, but um, I have, and I have, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think Annabelle's, Annabelle's crazy. She's done like massive miles this year. I like looked at her stats, and it's like insane. Yeah. Just so much. How much? I'm just looking this year. Uh, seven thousand. Oh, eh, it's just shy of eight thousand this year. That's pretty impressive. I think I'm only at 10, but I don't upload. I didn't upload in February. Yeah, and and like you're on a development team for a world tour team. So. Yeah. And like yeah. Anyway. Um, no, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just kind of have one question because I have to leave at half past because I'm going to school, unlike Parker does, and. Mm-hmm. Okay, my last big question though is, uh, what's your like backup plan? So, like, if you cycling doesn't work out for whatever reason, do you have a backup plan of what you might do? Yeah, I'll go to school. Probably engineering. I'm in Uvic for engineering right now, so probably engineering. Yeah. Are we'll you see. doing online courses right now, or just full yeah. cycling right now? Just full cycling right now. Yeah. So I did one I two, I did fall. I did a fall semester of engineering and then I had to took I took spring and summer off. I also have a question, final question. Um okay. for the future, like beyond this year, just uh cycling your cycling career in general, what would you say like your biggest goal is or something you really want to do? I'm if you I've have been one. debating whether it's Winning the first stage or the Champs Elysees at the Tour. Those are one of one of the two. I'm not sure which one would be cooler. It's like Champs Elysees is just epic. Yeah. Historic. Then the first stage yeah. you get the yellow too. So you exactly. got exactly. It's exactly. yeah. It is a this. Those those would be pretty cool. Just be uh. Didn't Sam Bennett win both? No, no he didn't. He didn't no, win the first didn't. stage. No, no, Christoph won the first stage, and Ewan won the last stage. No, Sam Bennett uh, won, won, won the last. Stage. last stage. Yeah, because I remember that was a Ewan big deal. Won the year before, Ewan won. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. Okay, I guess. Uh, are we good to go now? We got everything. Cover everything you want, Luke. Pretty, pretty solid. I mean, I could go forever. Riley's a fascinating guy. We haven't even touched custom paint jobs of bikes. Um, oh, his genie. I, school. I have um, just skip school. I have this. Whoa! I look at that. I that when I get home too. Just it's so your you know. paint job. You do, because I'm getting a new bike. I don't know. I might get you to. How, okay, wait. I have a question. How do you do the logos? Are, do you have a sticker printer? Yeah, I have a stencil cutter. Oh, cool. I need to. I'll pay you to get some stencils cut. Because I'm getting the Dolan. I, 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 I charge big money. I think I, I, I actually charge how much the vinyl is. I think that's my total total demand. So it's like $5 for as many stickers as you can print on a 
one meter roll or something. Yeah, it's pretty high rates. Holy gosh. I don't think I can afford that. Really yeah. breaking the brain for this one. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, I really want to get some cool things because I'm getting a Dolan. And literally everyone has a Dolan. Well, and that's really everyone, upsetting. Everyone coached by Hoosh has a Dolan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we get like a, say. We're sponsored by them. What so. are you on, Mark? I got a I got an Argon 18. I can get it. It's right next to me. One second. Go for it. Send it. <laughs> it's really lame. It's the worst bike I've ever seen. He looks awful Don't on it. Your saddle worst... height, Mark. <laughs> he can't hear. That's why I was saying that. Oh, he has headphones on. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the classic Argon. Oh yeah. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> He's trying to. <laughs> He's trying to work with. It. Yeah, that's the classic Argon. Yeah, the Argon. older one. That was a legend. I mean, yeah. and what's your saddle height, Mark? I don't know exactly the the number. Oh, because you, you know the uh, look bike. That's the measure. Yeah. I just know that I'm pretty sure. When Is I came 60? over here, I got a I got a bike fit. When I came over here, I dropped my sen my saddle two point five centimeters. Wow. Mm -hmm. Why? So not much. Wow. Yeah. Before. Bikes it. And they're like, I don't see them. Put it down. Hmm. Pretty nuts. I like having my saddle high. Otherwise, my knees hurt. Nice time, oh. yeah. Okay. I guess uh, that's everything we got. Thanks for listening, yeah. everyone. Uh, yeah. uh, give us a review. Follow us on uh, everything. Subscribe to the YouTube. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Ciao. All that jazz. Okay, Riley, Ciao. thanks for coming on. Ciao. Okay. Adios, yeah. amigo.